Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. That's Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas. Jerry uh, served 14 years in the House of Representatives. Eight of the years, we had an overlap in our service in the House. Uh, he comes from that great big first congressional district in Kansas, making up about, two, oh, I'd say three-fifths of the state of Kansas, West Kansas, Central Kansas. He falls in the line of Bob Dole, Keith Sebelius, one of my mentors when I first went to Congress, Pat Roberts, and now Jerry Moran. So it's quite a history, quite a legacy from that part of our country. He was elected to the Senate in 2011. He's on the Senate Appropriations Committee. Yes, did you hear that right? He's on the Senate Appropriations Committee, uh, the Commerce Committee, and the Committee on Environment and Public Works. During his time in Congress, Senator Moran has been a strong advocate for agriculture, education, and rural communities. He has worked successfully to bring the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility to Kansas State University for conducting uh, animal research intended to secure America's food supply and protection from uh, the very real human and animal threat for disease, from disease. In addition, and of particular interest, I think, to this group, he is an active co-chair of the bipartisan Senate Hunger Caucus. And from that position, he understands completely the importance of sharing U.S. agricultural expertise with smallholder farmers globally to help people raise themselves out of poverty and create markets for U.S. Uh, production. He also will understand the stability that food security provides. Let me personalize this a little bit. I admired uh, Jerry Moran for the service that he extended when he was in the House and continues to in the Senate. Jerry is a smart guy in the best sense of the word. He's solid, he's dependable, he stands up for his constituents and his state, but always recognizing the national interest. Those are admirable qualities, I think, in a legislator. He uh, represents large parts of my mother's family. I think they had the good sense to vote for him. I hope so. Uh, he reflects the kind of values that they stand, hard work, ethics, civil engagement. Um, let me say, Jerry Moran, a great American and a champion for food security. Please welcome Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas. You're very generous. Doug B. B Rider is still a politician. He uh, says the words we like to hear, and uh, I'm very grateful for that, Doug. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure and honor to join you this morning uh, at this symposium and to uh, perhaps bring, uh, as Doug indicated, uh, some ideas about why we can be optimistic about uh, today and, and the future. Uh, Doug described me as a 14-year veteran of the U.S. House of Representatives, and I did represent uh, a congressional district that I uh, had more cattle on feed, uh, more, more wheat, uh, more grain sorghum. Uh, we are an agriculture producing state and certainly that's the part of Kansas I come from. So agriculture has been front and center for me uh, my entire life, but certainly as a public official, uh, trying to make certain that good things happen for farmers and ranchers across the country. Um, and back in my house days, I had a midlife crisis in which I recognized, at least in my own mind, that I thought I was doing a pretty good job as a member of Congress, uh, but I didn't have the fulfillment that I wanted to have in this opportunity Kansans have, had given me to represent them here. And I started looking for an issue that might help me feel better about myself and actually do something that was more significant in the long term than simply answering my constituent mail and conducting town hall meetings and meeting with Kansans when they came to Washington, D.C. to see uh, their member of Congress. And because of that relationship with agriculture and because of what was going on at the world, in the world at the time, uh, food security, hunger became that issue and we got fully engaged in creating and supporting the House Hunger Caucus uh, and uh, to try to, to alleviate uh, uh, anyone around the globe from going to bed uh, uh, hungry uh, at the end of a day. Uh, I would admit that over a period of time, got prepared to run for the United States Senate, uh, got distracted by things. Uh, I did have a midlife crisis, a uh, second one, that caused me to go out and buy a Ford F-150 pickup. Uh, but then there was a third midlife crisis that's occurred uh, just within the last year. 
And that has caused me to uh, not only be the co-chairman of the Senate Hunger Caucus, uh, but to actually get engaged and to try to make that Senate Hunger Caucus something more than just another meeting. Uh, and so on this third midlife crisis, I don't know where, what my midlife is, but uh, on this third midlife crisis, um, we have decided that we're going to uh, further engage, uh, fully engage, uh, with my colleagues in the United States Senate to see if we can't up our game uh, and to do the things necessary from a public policy point of view and to bring uh, my colleagues, uh, our staff, but most importantly the American people to the view that it's important for our nation. It's important for us as Americans to find solutions to hunger around the globe. And we know that is a continuum. It exists from uh, agricultural and food development uh, to immediate crises in which uh, starvation, uh, malnutrition, hunger exists uh, today that needs to be addressed today. Uh, we need to have a long-term point of view about how we eliminate hunger in the world, and we need to have an immediate ability to respond to crises uh, around the globe. And uh, if I can help deliver the message that Doug conveyed about optimism, uh, I do believe that there is a strong and growing bipartisan support for these issues. From that development perspective to that immediate crisis uh, fulfill a need perspective. But we certainly could use yours and other uh, individuals across our country's help. Members of Congress get engaged in the, in the issue of the day. Uh, what the headlines are in the newspaper. What their constituents at home uh, are talking about. And I would fully admit that too often the issues that you care so much about that bring you to this symposium uh, today are not the ones that we hear at a town hall meeting or that a constituent calls to tell us something on the phone or sends us an email. And we need to make certain that Americans understand first the, the crisis and need in the world and secondly while, why this is an important issue just uh, certainly in a humanitarian and moral sense but also that it's in our own best interests. What a great combination in our own best interests as the United States of America to address these needs and to pursue development. And what a great opportunity it is to get involved in issues that are important morally and, and uh, from a human point of view, at the same time benefit us economically and in a strategic and defense sort of way. So, I am here to tell you that we welcome uh, this report that you just uh, were, the, the information just provided, but to tell you that we are committed to working with you and others uh, who want to make a difference in the world for the benefit of the world and for the benefit of the United States. My, uh, thank you, my, uh, thank you for being a leader. <laughs> Uh, I would bring you the report about the appropriations process. Uh, I served 14 years on the House Agriculture Committee. Uh, I'm prohibited by the rules of the Senate from serving on the same committee as the, uh, another senator from the same party from my state. And Senator Roberts, my colleague from Kansas, chairs the Senate Agriculture Committee, so that was never an, an option for me. Uh, but I've been the chair of the Agricultural Appropriations Subcommittee. Uh, I serve on that subcommittee. I also serve on the subcommittee on foreign ops uh, and so a couple of uh, those two subcommittees, agriculture and, and uh, foreign ops, come together to create uh, opportunities to us to actually put uh, dollars where the words are. And uh, we were successful in, uh, in 2016 of uh, a, a $250 uh, million dollar increase in Food for Peace, a one-time increase that uh, we, we found a, a pot of taxpayer dollars to well utilize and we increased um, uh, McGovern Dole spending by $10 million, things that hadn't happened for quite a while. And um, so that's 2016. Um, and in 2017, the fiscal year that we're now in, uh, our, our subcommittee on agriculture uh, has uh, increased in the Senate $134 million in Food for Peace and continued the funding increase for Medol uh, uh, we would say Dole McGovern in Kansas, but uh, uh, McGovern Dole. Uh, incidentally, as I re-engaged in, uh, in my efforts in regard to hunger, uh, I certainly talked to Doug B. Ryder and I talked to Secretary Glickman, uh, Secretary Glickman also being a Kansan, but one of the first phone calls and conversations I wanted to have was 
with Senator Dole, who in his usual way provides an inspiration to Kansans and Americans to do what's right uh, and to make a difference in the world. And he is uh, certainly cheering us on. But our, the, the point I would make it in, in the appropriations process is that I am of the belief that we will be able to avoid what we call a continuing resolution. Uh, too often Congress, way too often Congress has uh, uh, failed in its responsibilities. Uh, I'm a believer in the appropriations process, want us to establish priorities, want the appropriations process to take place on an annual basis as intended so that we can have influence and direction to those who serve in, uh, in cabinet and bureau and uh, department and agency uh, capacities. If you only do a continuing resolution every year, then those who work in those departments have little reason to pay attention to a member of Congress because they know they're simply going to get the same amount of money next year as they received this year. And I want to be able to influence the way that they think. The power of the purse string is uh, a very powerful one, but only when Congress does its work. And the good news that I would deliver today uh, is that it appears uh, I'm choosing my words carefully. I don't want to mislead anyone, but I am convinced we are not going to do a continuing resolution for the remainder of FY17, and that by April, on or about April 28th, when the current funding authorization expires, um, the House and Senate will have completed uh, the remaining uh, 11 appropriation bills. There are 12 total, one of which we did last year uh, and, were, and, and completed the other 11. Uh, will be, I say it this way, the defense bill has been, defense appropriations bill has been sent to the Senate by the House. We will add 10 other appropriation bills to that defense appropriation bill and send it back. That will include the agricultural appropriation bill. It will include foreign ops and the other, uh, other eight. But the point is that it will get us out of this habit that we've been in of uh, appropriating the same amount of money through a continuing resolution from one year to the next without prioritizing and the gains that we have had in increasing the funding for food programs in our Agriculture Appropriations Subcommittee will actually come to fruition. They just won't be numbers on a piece of paper. And I've had this uh, similar conversation with Lindsey Graham, who chairs our Foreign Ops, uh, Senator Graham from South Carolina, who, who chairs our Foreign Ops Subcommittee. And he, too, is fully committed to doing the things in uh, that appropriation bill on international disaster relief and feed the future. Uh, that, that go along with what we're doing in the Ag Approach Bill as well. So <laughs> Senator Graham and I visit um, certainly um, almost uh, every day, but certainly every week. And each of those conversations over the last four or five weeks have dealt uh, almost solely with issues related to hunger and to development. And again, has been highlighted for you all today, we believe that's in the best interest of us as human beings and our moral obligation to be good citizens of the world, um, our responsibilities to, to our faith, but we also recognize that our national security and our economic opportunities that we have for a growing economy, if you want to make certain that good things happen in the United States and that we have a bright future, we need to make certain that good things are happening around the globe um, and that we are a part of making certain that that happens. So, I hope I bring you good news that the appropriations process is alive and well and that dollars necessary to support development and support immediate emergencies uh, are in the pipeline uh, today and in the future. And I'm here to tell you that your interest in these issues is a noble calling and I, I commend you, I congratulate you, I thank you and ask for your help as we as members of Congress come together to try to make the world and most importantly uh, the United States uh, a brighter, have a brighter future. Thank you all for allowing me to join you, and uh, I wish you well in your symposium. Thank you.